Hello, this is How Could It Begin, and today we're going to be doing two things. One is SCP-2785. I'm not sure if I've read this one before. And the other thing we're going to be reading is a story relating to SCP-2785. And this story is made in an article of today. And it takes place in the a Daybreak canon. Basically, after the Apollyon on SCP-001, the sun takes over the world is when this SCP is when the, the story takes place. At first, we're going to have some context, because I don't remember SCP-2785. So I don't think I've read uh, their article yet. So you get to learn who they are before we get to, into the story about them. And anyway, if you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Over a minute for intro, that's fine. I have a number, SCP-2785. Object class, humanoid. You don't usually do object class for SCP. Containment class, Euclid. Special Consider and Procedures The current instance of SCP-2785 is be kept within a standard Euclid-class containment cell without furnishings. Observation of SCP-2785 is to take place using security cameras behind a bulletproof glass. SCP-2785 does not require sustenance. No materials containing at all of any kind are allowed within SCP-2785 cell. The outer layer of SCP-2785 cell is lined with a layer of lead that has been inspected bi-weekly for damages. SCP-2785 has displayed a marked interest in mathematics and engineering. As a reward for good behavior, it may be provided with textbooks in these subjects and non-metallic contraptions. These materials should not contain any information dated after 1960. Here's a picture of SCP-2785 following a, an SCP-2785-1 event on January 14th, 2014. Foundation markings were redacted. This is a, and this is the containment and protocol that was voided. SCP-2785 is to be kept in a standard Euclid class containment cell. The room is completely barren with no furniture, and the observation of SCP-2785 is a place to carry cameras behind bulletproof glass. SCP-2785 does not require sustenance. For at least one hour per day, as a reward for good behavior, SCP-2785 has choice freely from Site-17 and interact with personnel. During this time, SCP-2785 must be accompanied by at least two security guards. SCP-2785 is not allowed to enter restricted areas, nor come within 15 years of any artifact capable of affecting machinery. Prior to SCP-2785-1 events, SCP-2785 has been given any requested resource within reasonable limits. No more than 0.5 metric tons of material will be provided to SCP-2785. The room where an SCP-2785 event, uh, event occurs is to have a working ventilation system. Once SCP-2785-1 is complete, the previous instance of SCP-2785 may be recycled into its component materials. This is considered a further reward for good behavior. Therefore, if SCP-2785 begins to display undesirable traits, the privilege is to be revoked. They gave this SCP a lot more freedom before an event happened. I'm wondering what happened. Container Breach Protocol When SCP-2785 poses little to no danger to anyone except for itself in the an event of a site-wide container breach, it, it found it should be routed to the nearest exclusion area and preferably kept away from electronics. 
Security personnel should only exercise force in SCP-2785 if it makes its way towards any computer installations. If an SCP-2785-1 event occurs during a container for HD materials used must be cataloged and any new capabilities of SCP-2785 must be, must be audited. Description SCP-2785 is a fully functional automaton Previously made entirely out of mechanical parts, no longer so. SCP-2785 is 1.2 meters tall and is fully capable of movement and speech. SCP-2785 preferred language appears to be Russian, though after several decades of containment it has learned English via immersion. Although SCP-2785's appearance varies, it has always maintained a humanoid shape. When not under the process of an SCP-2785-1 event, SCP-2785 is polite to Foundation staff, offering to help when it feels that it is needed. The internal core of SCP-2785 appears to be a set of three gears, colored a light shade of green. It appears to be the source of SCP-2785's anomalous properties, using an unknown energy source to power SCP-2785. Direct analysis is impossible as SCP-2785 has stated that removing this core would likely render the anomaly inert. However, long distance analysis has implied that the core is made of organic material. Once a year, on January 17th, starting at oh, at 4.12 a.m., SCP-2785 will enter an SCP-2785-1 event. This event occurs in four phases. Collection. SCP-2785 will move around and find suitable materials in the general vicinity. While in this trance state, SCP-2785 will disregard personnel and has been known to actively avoid obstacles in the search of materials. These materials are usually various metals, types of rocks, and strips of cloth. Once SCP-2785 has a collection of materials deemed suitable, it will move on to the next phase. Construction SCP-2785 will use said materials to construct the basic, the basic frame of a similarly shaped uh, automaton. SCP-2785 has often used its bare hands to craft tools for use in its, its, its construction. Even when offered tools for its construct, SCP-2785 has rejected them, apparently out of, politeness, out of politeness. Transfer SCP-2785 will then take its core out of its chest cavity and put it into the automaton. Approximately 8 seconds later, SCP-2785 will see some animation and a new automaton will begin moving. For all, or all intents and purposes, this new automaton is now SCP-2785. As a previous instance of SCP-2785 no longer demonstrates anomalous properties. Finalization SCP-2785 will transfer internal parts such as gear systems and previous modifications from the previous instance of SCP-2785 to itself. When SCP-2785 has been completed, it will resume its former behavior. In all recorded SCP-2785-1 events, 25% have resulted in a new SCP-2785 instance with no notable changes, while 75% have resulted in variable changes designed to improve SCP-2785. Some of these changes include replacement of one of SCP-2785's hooks that was formerly used to manipulate objects with a fully functional human-like hand, shrinkage of SCP-2785, in 85, implementation of several clockwork devices, replacing a portion of 
of SCP 2785 system of gears and pulleys, replacement of its left hand with one of several tools. This improvement is the most common of SCP 2785's improvements and implementation of electronic devices within SCP 2785, replacing several of its mechanical components. This includes motors, various sensors, and processing units. And these are the inner electronic components of SCP-2785 recovered from a former instance of SCP-2785. It looks incredibly complex and I do not have any more to say about that because I don't know anything about mechanics. Addendum M27 and 85-1. Records have shown that SCP-2785 SCP was created in 1954 by Russian engineer Okolia Baranov. After his wife had a miscarriage, Baranov fell into a depression and spent most of his time creating sculptures. He created approximately 82 sculptures out of various materials, one of these sculptures being SCP-2785. None of these sculptures have shown any anomalous properties except for SCP-2785. Barnov disappeared at some point in 1956. KGB records indicate that Barnov was under observation as a person of interest. However, any further records, including those of Barnov's fate, have since been destroyed. SCP-2785 came to the Foundation's attention in 1960 when dancers of the village of Visoko Bosnia uh, report a monstrosity made of metal stealing their belongings. SCP-2785 was kept by the Foundation and brought to Area 44, where it remained until the construction of Site-91 in 1963. When it was as then moved there at the request of Project Supervisor Daniels. SCP-2785 has been in Foundation custody for 43 years and has uh, undergone a corresponding number of uh, SCP-2785-1 events. Then, 2785-2, this requires level 2 clearance and is an interview. Interviewed, 2785, interviewer, researcher Cal Elvin. This interview was carried out after a regular SCP-2785-1 incident in order to further ascertain the nature of SCP-2785. Begin log. This is January 17th, 2005, at 5.12 a.m. Calvin. In Russian, greetings, SCP-2785. I don't know Russian, so I'm saying this in English. I was hoping that interrupted. SCP-2785. You don't have to speak my language. I am able to speak yours. What? Could you please tell me how you learned, learned how to speak English? You speak it all the time. I decided it was easier for you if I learned your language. Okay. How are you, SCP-2785? I am doing well today, my friend. Miss Zen showed me a butterfly the other day. The funny thing is... But the funny thing was, is that it wasn't made out of butter. I'm sorry, but I have. Oh, sorry. Could you please give some insight on why you undergo uh, transformation events? I am sorry, but I have not learned that term yet. Could you please describe to me? I believe you refer it, refer to it as. I can't pronounce that. Russian for transformation. Oh, are you saying that you do not transform? Pardon? Three cycles ago, I perceived you with slightly more orange skin than usual. I'd assumed you had transformed. What? No, that was just... That wasn't a transformation. Oh, I had assumed you had made yourself more orange in order to make yourself more attractive to your peers. No, I did not. Are you saying that you undergo trans 
SCP-2785-1 SCP events in order to become more attractive. Unfortunately, I cannot feel love. It's an emotion I don't, don't feel. Like, like love. I perform transformations to make myself better. Could you please elaborate? As you might know, I have had a lot of years. I lost count a long a time long ago. Though I've gone at least seven tens. My like, people keep making new machines, and even these machines are far better than I. For example, I just picked up wind of cars that can magically move you across land in little time. I can't compete with that, so I transform myself to make myself better, and that way I can still service your people. So are you compelled to service us? That's just what I do. I feel like not helping people is just as bad as, as not helping people. Listen, I have to go. Do you have any final words? Yes, I would like, like to thank you for your hospitality here. Without other people to assist, well, I might go insane. End log, January 17th, 2005, 5-17. Closing statement, it is of note that researcher Calvin took a vacation to Puerto Rico on June 12, 2002 and came back with noticeably tanner skin. I wonder what this is talking about. This might actually be a bad idea. Hmm, this is a different canon. We don't have time for that. That's more like I don't want to read all that. Not this time. Then twenty seven eighty five three. On January fifteenth, twenty fourteen, two days prior to an SCP twenty seven eighty five one event, SCP twenty seven eighty five issued a large amount of copper for its transformation, in addition to other metals. However, for the first time in its containment. SCP-2785 did not requisite in cloth or wood parts. The SCP-2785-1 event took three hours longer than usual, mostly due to SCP-2785 using its tools to shape materials into electronic devices, and then integrating them into the new instance of SCP-2785. When SCP-2785 was informing the event, SCP-2785 reported that it wanted to match its progress with that of contemporary machines. Following this event, the gap between SCP-2785-1 events shortened from one year to 30 days, though SCP-2785 requisitioned far less material for these events. Exposing SCP-2785 to modern electronics is strictly forbidden from this point. I don't know, it seems, like a, I, it seems like an interesting idea. But of course, the SCP Foundation does not like interesting or anomalous ideas being free. Aldendum 2785-4 As of uh, July 21st, 2014, SCP-2785 has integrated electronic components folding into its form, replacing about 94.61% uh, it's supposed to do to the minimum amount of mechanical components required for electronic devices to function of its mechanical all components. Radio analysis has revealed that SCP-2785's core no longer spins in its former fashion, rather it emits electricity at approximately 250 volt volts. Some upgrades to itself include replacing gear systems with electronic motors, replacement of its tool hand, which was formerly a shovel, with a regular hand, now with several more tools integrated into it, and replacement of its mechanical voice box with an electronic synthesizer. On August 23rd, 2014, SCP-2785 asked to meet with SCP-1360, assuring that I want to make sure it wasn't sad anymore. 
It is left to note that SCP-2785 was not informed of SCP-1360's existence. An observation of SCP-2785's innards revealed an electronic signal interception system in the model of a sand foundation radio. This created the possibility that SCP-2785 gained knowledge of technology with the potential of causing a containment breach. SCP-2785's containment procedures have since been revised. I wish I had this little robot. At them, S. Addendum 2785 5. Interview 2785. Interviewer Researcher Calvin. Forward. Project Supervisor Daniels approved an interview with SCP 2785 in order to gain an understanding of its new behavior. Then begin log on September 3rd, 2014 at 7.14 a.m. Good evening, SCP 2785. Ah, finally, someone to speak with! You know, it is woefully dull sitting in a blank room with nothing but your thoughts. Alright, now. SCP-2785 emits a screech that at about 65... I've, I've decibels. It is assumed that this is a cry of excitement. You've recently integrated some electronic components into yourself. Do you mind giving me insight into why you did that? Oh yes, electronics. Wonderful things, aren't they? You know, before I found out about electronics, I could barely do addition by myself. Now I can do all sorts of math that you that even and you wouldn't believe. Have you ever about exponents? Watch this. SCP twenty seven eighty five begins to carve a sit Simple exponential equation into the table and then solves it. Are you amazed yet? Could you please detail how you discovered these electronics? Not even a gasp of of shock. SCP-2785 and researcher Calvin argue about the simplicity of exponential equations for four minutes. Extraneous dialogue removed. You know, if you aren't willing to give us information, I guess I'll be on my way. Researcher Calvin begins to stand up. No, please, don't leave! Answer my question, then. How did you discover electronics? Oh, it was amazing! I saw one of your people press a singular button on a device that could have been a much larger than a stone tablet! And it really displayed seven pictures! Seven! SCP-2785 remained silent for two seconds. After all, if you had devices capable of these wonders, what chance did I have? So I did what any self-respecting fellow would do, and became a better person. It took quite a while, but by watching, I discovered more secrets and eventually used them to transform myself. Could you describe how these electronics affected your actions? It was wonderful. Once I pushed the first, once I put the first first electronics in, it was like I had been blind my whole life, and now I could see. Do you know how many new types of math I learned? No, these mathematics will blow your mind to beyond the rings of the planet set. Interrupting, noticeably frustrated. This isn't going anywhere. How did you know about SCP-1360? It's simple. Once I managed to put together an air reader, SCP-2785's term for radio, and I discovered a wealth of knowledge. Did you know that knowledge is just floating in the air? I don't see why you, have an air why you don't have an air reader inside you too. I can see the latest news, the newest gossip, and even recipes. I've always wanted to cook. Do I want to make you a, a dish a dish referred to as coffee? Researcher Calvin's side has begun to stand up. Wait! You have yet to see the magic of long division! 
End log, September 3rd, 2014, 7.29 a.m. Close the statement. For three weeks following this interview, SCP-2785 used a small drill in its finger to draw a medium difficulty mathematical equation in the walls of its cell, so, as well as pages as such as, have you been amazed yet? I feel so bad for SCP-2785. They just want to help. They just want to be your friend. I don't know why the Foundation has to be so mean. Oh well. Such is the way of a cold, heartless organization like the Foundation. Anyway, now we get another story for, about SCP-2785. The Little Robot That Could SCP-2785 sat in his room. It was a small room, and there was not much to do. But SCP-2785 didn't mind. He knew that if he just sat in his room, eventually he'd be let out again. He'd get to transform again, and he'd get to be with his friends again. Just a thought made him happier than the happiest clam on Earth. But something was not right here. Normally, SCP-2785 could hear his friends talking outside. When uh, they talked about SCP-2785 could only guess. Maybe they were talking about letting SCP-2785 out. Maybe they were talking about cats and dogs. However, SCP-2785 didn't hear his friends talking. He heard them screaming instead. SCP-2785 had confusion when it came to screaming. Some of his friends told him that it meant that they were scared. SCP-2785 didn't understand scared. After all, if you were nice enough, why would anybody hurt you? Oh my goodness, this is so... Oh, autism coded. Oh wait. Some of them also told him that it meant they were having so much fun. They were exhilarated. SCP-2785 also had confusion for that. How could you be having so much fun? You were scared of it. SCP-2785 had heard of roller coasters, cars attracted to train tracks. I mean, cars attached to train tracks that zipped around so fast, he became exhilarated. Did that mean that his friends built a roller coaster? Were they going to show it to him as a surprise? SCP-2785 simply could not wait to get out. However, SCP-2785 did have to wait. So he waited. He waited and listened to his screaming. SCP-2785 was sitting in his room, imagining what he would do if he got out. When all of a sudden, it became dark. I'm going to start calling SCP-2785 Bob. Normally, Bob would not, not have been able to see in the dark. He would have been as blind as a schoolgirl who had gone blind. <laughs> but a few transformations back, he had acquired the ability to see in the dark. So he saw in the dark, and he saw something strange. There was a door in his room. A door that stayed shut no matter what, and today, the door had opened. If Bob could have, he would have passed out from exhilaration. Bob walked out, and he saw it, that it was a mess. Tables were flipped over, the objects that were formerly resting upon them scattered across the, the ground. Fluids of almost every type covered the walls and floors. Lights were smashed, doors were detached from their hinges, and paintings that had given and Bob a curiosity in the past were the face to the point where they no longer gave him curiosity. Bob almost passed out from non-exhilaration. And where were all of Bob's friends? Were they on vacation? Sometimes when his friends were gone, his other friends said that they took a vacation, and soon enough they came back. Maybe all of them had taken a vacation? Bob got an idea. The place was, was a mess, and all of his friends were on vacation. What if he cleaned up the place to ma and made, ate it spick and span? When his friends came back, they'd be so happy they'd make the happiest man alive look sad. <clears throat> But first, Bob had one thing to take care of. 
After his transformation, during which he had acquired better seen the dark and better tools for his hand, as Bob decided to listen to the air. He found that inside his room, he couldn't listen to air, even if he wanted to. Bob began to read and saw those that were melting. That was strange. Maybe they were having their transformations too? That would explain why they were on vacation. Bob found a stash of books that looked useful. If only he could read. Of course, Bob could read in his native language, but in English? He only really learned a handful of words. He was almost as illiterate as someone who could not read. That just wouldn't do. He had to learn a little, maybe a lot. He hooked up the first book and got started. Bob decided to start with the main foyer. He had found a mop and a somewhat clean bucket of water to clean up the goop on the floor. He had found some perfectly good glass paints to replace the broken and windows. In addition to grabbing some old furniture from its storage closet, Bob had read Ed through Carb D101 and mostly understood how it worked. As Bob started mopping, he thought about what he would do when his friends got back. Maybe he would have a party. A party would be nice. Bob had been allowed to attend only a couple of the staff parties. They had good people, good talk, and amazing decorations. His friends would love it if he set up a party all by himself. The thought excited Bob, but he couldn't have a party with goop all over the floor, so he mopped and mopped and mopped a little more. One of the hallways, a couple hallways over from his old room, had a part of the ceiling that had completely caved in. A massive pile of dirt took up the room, with bits of steel, rebar, and stone mixed in. The pile was soaked from the oaken pipes above it, which had since gone dry. It would take a long time to remove this pile. All Bob had was a shovel and a place to put it. Researcher Caroline saw him on the fifth floor. Bob figured that she wouldn't mind. Bob shoveled up a small pile and began carrying it. After all, he had nothing better to do. Bob was replacing a light bulb near the second floor break room when a thought came to him like a bullet out of a gun. Your friends have been on vacation for a long time now. How long, long has it been since he had been let out of his room? Bob had been keeping track. A week? A month? It couldn't have been that long. He made progress on the first three floors, but he wouldn't even show a pig anything above that. He didn't even have the lights working. So Bob put the thoughts away in his mind. To be thought of later. For now, there was work to be done. Should any portion of the AO-3 generator become dysfunctional due to overuse, it is simple to repair, provided central or replacement parts. First, make sure that the generator is powered off. Bob put the manual down for a second, he examined the generator until he found a switch labeled ON-OFF. He found on the switch to in towards the ON side. Bob put the switch into the OFF position before returning to the manual. Next, open the panel labeled maintenance and look inside of the generator. Make sure you identify any components that are, are damaged. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove these components and replace with functional components. After opening up the panel, SCP-278, I mean Bob, visually identified several wires that had been earned out, as well as one of the motors. Bob had a screwdriver attached to his hand, so he removed those components, quickly replacing them with the ones he had found in the storage room. Once everything looked intact, he closed the panel and switched the generator on. After a few seconds of delay, the lights above flickered, then came on as Bob turned off his C in the dark. He heard many other lights in the building flicker, then come on. He also heard beeping. 
Did he forget to unplug a few things? Darn. How long has it been? Bob had to remember since he wasn't really keeping track. He used to count by the number of transformations that had gone by. Gone, gone by. He counted 1, 2, 3, 24? That was quite a few. But how much time was it between each transformation? Bob remembered that he used to have a year between each transformation, but he had been transforming an awful lot lately. Maybe there was a week between? I'll decide to go with that answer, in order to keep his sanity. I'm not alone, am I? The thoughts kept racing inside of Bob's head. Of course he wasn't alone, but he hadn't seen any people lately. He hadn't even seen as much as a mouse or even a house fly. But he wasn't alone. Bob remembered about bacteria, microscopic little buckers that were everywhere. He couldn't see them, but they were there. They were there. He kept that thought in his head. You're alone. The thought came out of the dark, like a bat coming out of a shadow. The thought even made it Bob dropped the table leg he was carrying and sat down on the green to the couch in the break room. His friends were going to be back from their vacation soon, right? They've been gone for so long now. Oh, what if just what if they weren't coming back? Well, he had the bacteria, right? But could he talk to the bacteria? Could he have friendly conversations with the bacteria? Could he even be friends with the bacteria? Bob sat down. He never. He thought he'd never be alone. But here he was, alone. Bob picked the table leg back up, and decided to attach it to the couch. And that was the little robot that could. He's all alone. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!